Hey YouTube, another quick uh, video for me, a review of a Harbor Freight tool. Again, but something a little bit different. Um, I thought I would review the Harbor Freight uh, Japanese style saw, but uh, I got this a while ago, but I wasn't sure if it was a really good saw. So I actually sprung and got a uh, real Japanese uh, wood cutting saw. This is called a Ryoba saw. And um, I thought I'd compare, contrast them and do a showdown and see which one is better. You know, Harbor Freight is a quarter of the price. Uh, this Harbor Freight saw, uh, the disclaimer is I've had it for a few months, uh, sells for $9.99. And with a coupon, you can get it for basically uh, 8 bucks. Um, and this is a Japanese Gyokuchu saw, which is a popular brand of Japanese saw. Um, this is the 9.5 inch or 240 millimeter uh, version, which is similar to the Harbor Freight one. Um, and it retails for almost $40. I think I got it for around $37 uh, online through Amazon. So we'll have a showdown between these saws. Uh, we'll take a close look and see which one is better um, and see how much better the more expensive saw is. But before we begin, um, I thought I'd give a little background about uh, what Japanese saws are. I apologize if you already know all this. Um, and how they're different. So uh, this is a traditional Western saw. It's an inexpensive one, it's a cheap one, but um, it's actually designed differently. So you can see that the, the teeth are only on one side and it's what you call a push saw because you hold it, your hand, and it actually cuts on the push motion, not the pull motion. So if you look at the teeth very closely, they're angled forward here. So they're really digging in and biting into the wood and cutting the wood on the push stroke. And because of that, it's prone to bending. And so this steel has to be stiffer um, and usually thicker. In contrast, a Japanese pole saw um, actually um, has the teeth fo facing the other way, you can see here. And so it actually cuts on the pull motion. So you hold it in two hands and there's a lot of good saws uh, excuse me, videos out there that review how to use these saws. But as you pull on that, that's when the cutting motion is. And since you're pulling on the blade, it can be much thinner. Um, you take less wood and it's easier to cut. Uh, the position is a little bit different. You can use both hands, use a little bit of your body motion to cut it. And the reason that this Ryoba saw is actually two-sided is there are larger teeth to do rip cutting where you cut with the grain of the wood. So if you're cutting with the grain of the wood or smaller teeth to do cross cutting if you're cutting across the grain of the wood. And I actually just like to start my cut with the cross cut grain and I'll switch even for, for rip cuts. Um, the other thing you should know is that some of the Japanese saws which are even thinner than this, um, this is the Suzuki saw, I believe it's called, and what you can see is that the metal is so thin, it again cuts on the pull motion, but it actually needs a spine on the back because this blade is so thin and would just sort of wiggle away. Um, it wouldn't be usable. Okay, a little bit of background on those. Um, let's go to the comparison of the two saws. Item number 67058. It's a Portland brand saw. It retails for $9.99. It's made from high carbon steel, carbide steel, and it has a seven teeth per inch and 16 teeth per inch. Uh, the blade length is nine and three quarters. Shipping weight is about seven, uh, three quarters of a pound. This is the Gyokuchu saw. Little background on this. This saw is the 240 millimeter saw. Uh, it's advertised as a nine and a half inch saw. Item number six, item number 651, weighs six and a half ounces, so it's lighter. Um, it actually has more teeth per inch. It actually has um, nine teeth per inch here and 22 teeth per inch on the cutting. So it's, it's much more refined. So um, if you see the Harbor Freight saw, it comes with a little cardboard 
uh, package. It comes with these little plastic pieces to guard the blades. Uh, the Japanese saw comes, of course, in a nicer package here, plastic with uh, cardboard. Um, and it actually only came with the blades covered on one side. I guess the cardboard covers the other side. So I guess you can reuse this case to keep it nice. You can see the saws are about the same size. Put this here. Um, the key difference here is that, you know, for the more expensive Yokuchu saw, um, that I, Yokuchu, um, because this is hard and steel, unlike uh, Western saws, which you can sharpen with a file, you actually just replace this whole blade. Um, and so these blades run about 10 bucks. Um, online, maybe um, a little bit more depending on where you buy them. And you can see that there's a little screw here and you can um, um, sort of unscrew them and remove and replace these blades. Now the Harbor Freight blade can also be removable. You see the screw here, but interestingly, the whole saw itself is actually less than a replacement blade for the Kyokuchu saw. And so let's take a closer look at these saws. Um, in terms of the width of the blade, Um, you know, the, the Harbor Freight saw is a little bit thicker. Uh, I think my calipers aren't going to be able to even measure it, but it comes in probably like 0.3 millimeters. This one's a little bit narrower, maybe 0.2 millimeters. Maybe I can show that uh, on edge here. This is the Harbor Freight saw, Kyokuchu saw, clearly thinner. The metal seems to be a little bit better, uh, hardened steel. For the Kyokuchu saw and the Harper Freight one, a little bit um, probably lower quality steel and, and so forth. In terms of the blade, uh, the the teeth, um, let's compare the rip cutting teeth here. Um, it looks like the Kyokuchu has um, finer teeth. The Harper Freight one has. Uh, slightly different teeth, uh, excuse me, further apart. And then in terms of the pattern, that's the Harbor Freight, the Kyokuchu for the rip cutting. Um, I guess I'm not an expert enough in the saws to say they're that much different. Um, if you look at the handles, the Harbor Freight one has a plastic handle with a screw and a rubber grip, which actually feels pretty comfortable. Um, the Gyokuchu actually has a wooden handle, which is uh, nice. It seems to be some type of hardwood here with a wrapped cord. It looks like a plastic or vinyl cord that goes around. And so it feels nicer. Um, you know, my hands are a little bit bigger, um, so I don't know which one feels more comfortable. They feel about the same. It feels, this is a little stiffer, um, probably more control. Um, this one's a little softer, maybe a little bit more comfortable. So let's do some uh, cutting and let's figure out which one is better. We'll compare these two uh, blades. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, YouTube, in our final sort of video showdown, the Harbor Freight Saw actually won the first race, but then lost the second and third races. And when I was reviewing the video um, in the crosscut race, um, the first piece of wood that the Gyo Kuchu Saw had to saw through was actually in a knot and probably wasn't fair, and that wood was probably harder to cut through. So clearly the Gyokuchu saw um, could do about a one and a half to two inch cross cut in about, you know, nine seconds or so. And it took the Harbor Freight saw consistently about 12 seconds to do it. Granted my skill with the, the saw is limited, um, but clearly the, the narrower blade, the harder steel made the cut a lot easier. The one disclaimer is that this Harbor Freight saw is a few months older than the Gyokuchu and I've been using it a lot more. Um, when you looked at the quality of the cuts, um, the, again, the Gyokuchu saw had less tear out and a cleaner cut. I had a little bit more difficulty staying on line. I think because the Gyokuchu saw is so fine, it's hard to keep that straight line. So clearly the Gyokuchu saw is the superior saw. Um, however, you know, without a coupon, it's four times the cost and with a coupon, this is, uh, you know, one fifth the cost. So this is five times more expensive. And so is it worth it? And, you know, my woodworking skills are limited, so I don't make any fancy furniture or nice gift boxes. I hope someday to have that type of skill. Um, so for most of my cutting, I'd say 95%, I use this Harbor Freight saw and it's a great saw. It works really well um, and it's reasonably priced. Uh, occasionally when I do something a little bit nicer, uh, which is not that often now, um, then I'll break out the Gyokuchu saw and use this to, to, to work on sort of more elaborate or finer projects. And hopefully as my skills improve, um, I'll be spending more time using this saw. But right now, the limitation in the cutting of these saws is actually my skill ability and not the saw itself. So hopefully that was useful. I recommend this saw. It's actually a really good Harbor Freight saw. Uh, I use it for 95% of my cutting needs on wood. And very rarely uh, I break this saw out for a finer, cleaner cut. Um, you know, whenever I use this, you can sort of cover up little issues with sandpaper and so forth, um, and that will fix it. But uh, hope this review was helpful. Both of them are really good saws. I really like the Japanese saws. Um, I use them all the time as opposed to the Western saws. I recommend the Harbor Freight saw. You can't go wrong. You know, it's it's so cheap, it's cheaper than replacing the blade. And that's why I use it for everyday cutting. Um, and then for finer work, I'll break out the Kyokuchu saw. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and hit the like button. Talk to you soon. Bye.